Previously on Cirque Stories, we explored my history with Cirque and my path from being an Olympic athlete to a Cirque du Soleil performer. Check out the link in the description below to learn more. Commitment, passion, performance, countless hours of training. These are just a few of the things our dreams are made of. We are Cirque du Soleil artists and we all have a story to tell. Behind the scenes, behind the makeup and all the costumes, this is unfiltered, raw, like you've never seen before. Welcome to Cirque Stories. Hi, I'm Christina Jones, and I'm your host for Cirque Stories. Every Cirque artist has a story to tell. We all come from different backgrounds and have unique journeys. I had a chance to catch up with this particular artist as he was getting ready for One Night for One Drop, and I knew immediately. I wanted to share his story with you. Thank you so much, Maxime, for agreeing to do this with us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the character you are tonight. It looks like me. Mm -hmm. Close to me because he's deaf. When I perform somewhere in the audience, some people, they know I'm deaf. Then, let's see what you will do. Then, I will approve them. I'm good. They will forget. I'm deaf. Yeah. Every time it works. Why did you want to be a clown? At first, I wanted to be a mime. Mime is similar to clown, but mime is not picking. Okay. So it's perfect for me. And I love mime because it's physically, big expression, movement, telling story without verbal. And we performers give to them happiness, joy. Cry, emotional, beautiful. Yeah. Good luck tonight. Have so much fun. So how about I buy you a cup of coffee sometime soon? We'll chat. Yes. Deal. Sound good? All okay. right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. so much fun. Good luck. Thank you so much. Maxim Fomichov is originally from Moscow. He started studying performing arts when he was 13. In order to supplement his years of studies, he had a plethora of jobs off stage. He did everything from janitorial work to operating a forklift and everything in between. So Max, thank you so much for having a coffee with me today. We want to have a better idea of who you are off stage. So why did you move to Canada? Oh, actually, I defect. You defected? Yeah. Wow. I was performing with the other deaf theater group. Very last day, we ran away from hotel, back to fire exit. Okay. We ran away. Really extreme. When USSR, Soviet Union collapsed, so a lot of changes. So I felt it's time for me to move a new life. Because 1989, first time I was in America, University of Deaf, I was a total shock. Yeah. So really, with my own eye, see America. I was a free country, freedom. I was like, after that, I wanted to move to America. And have you been back to Russia to visit yeah. her? Yeah. One of the best moments when I performed with Ali Korea in Moscow. Okay. And my mom was there. Oh. And I was performing my storm clown. I was crying on days. I was traveling, like, uh, emotional theory because I, I'm looking, I'm thinking, wow, mom watching me. That is happened because of course, I'm on the biggest, biggest moment in my life. She must be so proud of yes. you. Very. Yeah. As you and I both know, in a live performance, things can go wrong really fast. And I know that my stage managers communicate the need for a contingency to me over the intercom. If I'm on stage, people think if the kid happened, the manager come to me, we can play longer because, okay, go play longer. If I'm already on stage, I know about that. They let me know what is going on, learn from how to work and deep work. So if you had no worries, all of the money in the world, no health concerns, no responsibilities, what would you do? What I would do? Ride bike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Maxime says that being deaf has its advantages on stage because he has a sixth sense which allows him to feel the audience's vibes and reactions. He's able to rely completely on physical acting, body language, and facial expressions to deliver his performances. Maxime is truly remarkable, and his persistence and work ethic are palpable. Life hasn't always been easy for him, but Maxime's will to never give up and never stop clowning around is inspiring. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Cirque Stories, but I'd love to hear from you. Which artist would you like me to interview next? And remember, you can always catch me on the O stage at the Bellagio on the Las Vegas Strip. And you can click on the link to buy tickets. Also, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next episode of Cirque Stories. Believe me, you're not going to want to miss this one. Also, you can always look below for more information and links. See you next time.